In this video, I'm making the most satisfying LEGO creations I can come up with, so let's start building. One thing I've always found to be really cool and satisfying are patterns and optical illusions. So I collected a bunch of these jumper plates and twisted each one of them slightly to give the entire thing a spiral shape that looks pretty cool. But to make it even better, I decided to motorize it. So I built up this turntable and some LEGO gear pieces that are able to hold the spiral steady. And I have to say, motorizing it makes it look 10 times cooler than just trying to spin it with your hands. Since that one turned out pretty good, I decided to make a few other versions as well. This one uses cylinder pieces that I tried to make look like a cool candy cane. However, it doesn't look quite as good as the first one in my opinion. However, this last version is the best. I was able to make this helix shape by stacking a lot of purple and yellow plates, and when it spins, it looks pretty crazy and is almost kind of mesmerizing. Something else that can be super satisfying are fidget toys, like these twisty ones that can be turned into a ton of different shapes. So to make one in Lego, I gathered up a ton of these macaroni pieces. Then I link them all together with some connecting pipes and it works exactly like one of the original toys. It can fold up, stretch out, and twist into a ton of different shapes and could definitely keep you occupied in English class. Another classic toy that can be extremely satisfying is a top, especially when you spin it perfectly. To make a Lego one, I started with this ninja's cat piece that has this perfect point on the tip of it. For the body, I used these Lego dish pieces that I connected together with this minifigure lipstick piece. For the handle, I used a lightsaber and it actually spins really well and is super satisfying with with this spiral on top of it. Then I built a few more, like this super small one that spins on top of this spike piece, and this bigger one is using this piece that LEGO has used as a drill bit and a unicorn horn. But I wanted to push things even further, so I used these roller coaster pieces to make a giant top that would spin on this really tiny Technic piece. However, I wanted to motorize this as well, so using the turntable, I made this stand piece for the joint to balance on. However, it wasn't fast enough at first, so I added another layer of gears to speed it up. It spins in a crazy way, but once once it gets going, it can stay spinning forever. So back in elementary school, I was taught that the pilgrims had this toy called Jacob's Ladder. It's not an actual ladder, but this layer of blocks that look like they can flip-flop for infinity. So I wanted to build one in Lego, and thankfully, I found this video of one on YouTube, and trying to build it for hours, I was finally able to make it. And I have to say, it is super satisfying. It can fold around in a couple of different ways, and even sounds pretty cool. However, while writing the script, I ended up feeling like a complete idiot because the description for the video actually had a link to the original designer's instructions the Bruh. entire time. One of my favorite types of satisfying videos are the ones with the giant hydraulic presses, so that was what I decided to build next. This block piece is the smasher, and I set up some beams to stabilize the entire thing, and added some of these caution strips as well. Next, I went to the Dollar Tree and bought every kind of slime I could find to see which one would be the most satisfying. To start, let's see how shaving cream does. I think I'd give it a 4 out of 5. Next, I tested out some Flarp, which definitely had a different texture than the shaving cream. So the problem was that it was almost too thick. I had to push extremely hard. However, I eventually did end up smashing some of it, and it was kind of satisfying when I pulled it out. Overall, 2.5 out of 5. I also tried some blue flart because it felt a bit less thick and it did squish a bit better. However, as you can see, I pushed so hard it literally broke the press. This next canister ended up being extremely loose and slimy. Definitely like the classic Nickelodeon slime or like the monster blood from Goosebumps, which thankfully made it much more squishable. I don't think the shape of the squished slime was quite as satisfying as the shaving cream, but it was still pretty fun. I'll give it a 3 out of 5. Like the flarp, it was almost more satisfying to remove it from from the press rather than the pressing itself. Next, I tested this stuff called ice cream fluff, and it has got to be the messiest, stickiest slime I've ever seen. Surprisingly, it ended up squishing in a pretty satisfying way. Since it squashed pretty well and made some cool shapes, I'd rate it a 3.5 out of 5. The last canister I was going to try ended up feeling like glue and was really disgusting, so I threw it away. 0 out of 5. And that means the winner is the shaving cream. If you want to try something really easy, you can use regular bricks as dominoes, except it ended up being harder than it looked because I accidentally knocked it over three times before before I finished. But when I finally did get it done, the end result was worth it.
If you want to try something more complex, you can try a great ball contraption. I started with these slide pieces, but to get the ball all the way to the top was the real challenge. I gathered up as many of these tread pieces that I could find in the hopes that I could use them as an escalator to take the ball up to the top. I set up a track from the slide back to the escalator at the bottom, but after going down the slide, the balls had way too much momentum. So to contain them a bit more, I turned the path into a tunnel. The next thing I had to build was this tower, which the balls would drop into from the escalator before rolling along the path to get back to the slide. And finally, I installed the motor. But let's speed it up a bit. But will it work with minifigure heads? I couldn't make a satisfying video without at least a few more fidget toys, so I made some more with gear pieces. This one can be spun from each of the different gears, giving it a lot of options. On the other hand, this one is simpler, but still effective. I used a rubber band to make this one so that it could make a constant clicking sound. And if you're really on a budget, you can make one like this that only uses five pieces. By this point, I needed some more ideas, so I asked all of you guys. Kermit suggested the sound of Lego pieces. First try. A lot of you said feeling a bunch of single studs, so I gathered up this entire cup of Lego gold. And it is in fact very satisfying. And this makes so much more sense now for why Smog would just want to lay on a pile of gold all day long, and even why Uncle Scrooge just wants to swim in it. These comments said cool stuff in stop motion, so I set up this one that can go on forever. And some of you said designing custom minifigures. This comment said tiling things off to make them smoother, which is an advanced building technique. To prove it, I made this old style of Lego kitchen that is really blocky with a lot of studs showing on all of the furniture and different details, which is how Lego sets used to be designed. But then, I remodeled the entire room to make it way smoother, and in my opinion, it looks a lot better this way. Hey Brad, one of the most satisfying things about collecting Lego is minifigures. But what's even better is building an army of over 2,000 of them. The only downside is that you'll break your back while setting up all of the minifigures. But hey, it's worth it. Isn't that right, Brad? So I took all of my Imperial minifigures, which were just thrown randomly into this bin, and started setting them up on this base plate. The Stormtroopers are in one section, with all of the other factions in their own areas, like all of the Dark Troopers being over here. And of course we have the Emperor and Darth Vader leading them at the front, and this definitely looks way nicer. Master Builders told me to attach and then bend a ton of brick separators, so I did just that. Although it did fall apart really easily. I don't even know if this is possible, but a Lego Newton's Cradle would be very satisfying. Obviously not this kind, like like this kind of Newton's Cradle, but you know what I mean. Thanks B3. To build this one, I gathered up a bunch of Lego ball pieces and attached them to these rods. Unfortunately, I pretty much failed this one. It only kind of works, and not in a satisfying way like the original. The balls are too light, and I think perhaps something like marbles would work a bit better. I got the idea from TD Bricks to make one of those cool pin boards, but instead of using regular bricks, I'm using Technic beams because they're holes are pushed way closer together. You can make it do the wave, and it also sounds pretty cool when you turn it as well. The next thing I wanted to build was an infinity flipper. It kind of feels like opening up a card or book over and over again. It's really addicting, and it's another one of those that could take up a ton of your time. Back in middle school, one of my classes made this peg game out of a block of wood, so I decided to recreate it in Lego. Basically, you jump the pegs like in checkers, and your goal is to only have one left at the very end, which proves you're really smart or something. But don't take it from me, because I had to use this WikiHow art just to figure out how to complete it. If you do win, it is really satisfying. Chinese nesting boxes are also pretty satisfying. So I built this black and white one. With the lid on, it just looks like a black cube, which is pretty heavy, but it can be taken apart layer by layer. And if you make each layer a tower, you can even create a bit of an optical illusion with it. Lego hinge pieces can be super useful for custom designs because they can make shapes that are impossible with regular Lego bricks, such as these hexagons. With one of them, I made this Lego color wheel, which you could use as a reference when building other things 
things. And with the other one, I built up a castle. It has some cool window pieces and a door, and is the home to this Lego king. Inside I included his throne, as well as the queen. I also thought the pattern on these quilts would translate really well into Lego, so I built up a ton of Lego cubes in a bunch of different colors. It's another simple one, but still looks kind of cool. If you want to see more satisfying mechanisms, you can check out this video by my friend RJ Imbrix, and in the comments, let me know what other satisfying things I should have built in Lego. And until next time, see you later.